Hello and good afternoon to all of you. I hope all of you are doing well. So in today's class, we will be focusing on different types of data analytics. Now, data analytics can be broken down into four basic types. These are descriptive analytics, diagnostic analytics, predictive analytics, and prescriptive analytics. So these are the four basic types of analytics. Now let us try to understand what is the significance of descriptive analytics. Descriptive analytics basically tries to describe what has happened over a given period of time. Again, I'll repeat it. Descriptive analytics basically tries to describe what has happened over, over a given period of time. For an example, if you have posted an opinion using your social networking account and now you want to know by what amount the number of views have gone up or how many people have reacted to your opinion or how many people have um, commented on your opinion so that falls under descriptive analytics so for an example if you're working with marketing agency so if you want to determine whether the sales this month is exceeding uh, the sales that was made in the last month so that falls under descriptive analytics now likewise let us try to understand what is diagnostic analytics now diagnostic analytics as the name says it focuses on why something has happened or why an event has happened, or why an exception has happened. So in order to perform diagnostic analytics, one of the prime requirements is that you need to have adequate amount of data and an ability to create hypothesis. So here, what we tend to do is we tend to formulate hypothesis, and depending upon the traits or the patterns or the trails that are there evident in the data we tend to approve or disapprove the hypothesis now likewise predictive analytics predictive analytics basically focuses on what is likely going to happen right based on the analysis of the data so here what we need to do is we need to ensure that the data that is used for predictive analytics is of very high quality as well as the analytical technique has to be very sound because the entire decision will be made based on the outcome of the predictive analytics so this is very much important so predictive analytics whenever you're performing predictive analytics it's very much uh, important for us to ensure that the data is a very high quality and analytic technique that you are using is very sound now likewise we have prescriptive analytics now prescriptive analytics basically tries to provide you suggestions suggestions for course of action that may be initiated so for an example if the temperature is constantly high for four continuous days so now for the fifth day so it will give you a suggestion that you can buy uh, ice creams in greater volume from wholesale and put it to retail store so so that is a typical example of prescriptive analytics now, so these are the four basic types of analytics. Again, I'll repeat it. You have descriptive analytics, you have diagnostic analytics, you have uh, predictive analytics, and you have prescriptive analytics. Now, let us try to understand what are the steps that are involved in data analysis. Right? So basically, there are six steps that are involved in data analysis. First one is to identify the question. Second one is to obtain the data. Third one is to understand the data. Fourth one is to prepare the data. Fifth one is to analyze the data. And sixth one is to present the result. Now, these steps are very crucial in terms of data analysis. So we'll try to understand what are the activities that are performed in these individual phases. So first one is to identify the question. So it's very much essential for all of us to first know what is the problem that is to be solved. And then all the related actions with the problems can be performed. So here, what we need to do is we need to begin with determining what is the problem that is to be solved. And then we'll proceed on with data collection and eventually analysis and presenting the result. So that is what identify the question is all about. Identify the question basically means that you need to first determine what is the problem that is to be solved. So before you begin working with any form of data, what you need to know is you need to know what is the problem that you're trying to solve. So once you know what is the problem that is that is to be solved, then what we can do is we can start obtaining data. 
data that is relevant in context to the problem that is to be solved. So here what you need to do is you need to find or collect the data and it has to, and you have to ensure that whatever data that you have collected is relevant to the problem that is to be solved. Now, as I've said, there can be multiple types of sources from where data can be acquired. So you can have primary source or secondary source for the data. Now, likewise, the third step that you have is understanding the data. Now, it's very much important for us to correctly interpret the data because the overall success of the analytical techniques or analysis techniques depends on how correctly the data has been interpreted and how correctly the data has been collected and eventually interpreted. So understanding the data is very much important. So here, what we need to do is we need to ensure that the data is correctly implement, uh, interpreted as well as the data is capable of preserving its integrity. Now, likewise, preparing the data. So now, once you have collected the data and once you have understood the data, now what you need to do is you need to prepare the data as per the requirement of the analysis procedure. So this is very much important. So there has to be complete compliance of the data with the analytical processes. So, until and unless data does not fit to the requirement of analysis processes, these processes may not be capable of delivering desired result. So, it's very much important for us to prepare data. So, while preparing data, the first thing what we need to do is we need to eradicate any sort of problem that may be associated with the data in terms of inconsistencies, in terms of ambiguities and in terms of incompleteness. So once you weed out all problems associated with the data, then what you need to do is you need to prepare the data in the desired format so it can be used in order to perform analysis. Now the next step is analyzing the data. So analyzing the data basically means you are trying to uncover the, question, the, the answer for the questions that you have identified in the first step. So again, I'll repeat it. So analysis is a mechanism for uncovering or discovering the, the answer for the questions that you've identified in the first step. Now, once you have determined the answer to the questions that are identified in the first step, what you need to do is you need to present the results so that results can be interpreted by various stakeholders for their own purpose-specific tasks. So that is what presentation is all about. So here, what we have learned is we have learned that data analysis basically has six identifiable phases. First one is to identify the question. Second one is to obtain the data. Third one is to understand the data. Fourth one is to prepare the data. Fifth one is to analyze the data and subsequently present the result. Now let us try to understand various phases that are involved in data analytics, or let us try to understand data analytics process. So data analytics basically starts with business understanding. So this is very much important. So here, what we need to do is we need to identify all possible business objectives that are to be attained from the business process. So this is what business understanding is all about. So business understanding is the first phase of our data analytics. Now, likewise, once the business objectives have been identified, what you need to do is you need to rightfully identify the data that is required by the business objectives. So in order to attain the business objective, what data is required, so that is extracted during the data exploration phase. And then you have data preparation where what we tend to do is we tend to prepare the data as per the requirement of the analysis process. Then we have data modeling where we tend to build conceptual models where conceptual models are nothing but relationship between various related concepts or objects. Okay. So then what we'll tend to do is we'll tend to test the ability of the models to generate desired result. Right? And eventually what we'll do is we'll evaluate the models and if found fruitful, the, the models will be deployed in order to provide solution for the business processes. So this is what is performed during data analytics process in a nutshell. Now let's move into each of the phases in greater detail. 
Now let's try to understand the first phase that is called as business understanding. Now in the business understanding phase, as I've already said, here what we tend to do is we tend to determine the business objectives. We tend to assess the situation in order to determine what are the constraints under which the attainment of objectives should be done and determine data mining goals and then produce a viable project plan as per the requirement. Now, business objectives are defined in this particular phase. So, this is very much important for you to understand. So, this is the first phase of the data analytics process where we try to identify the various uh, notable business objectives. We tend to assess the situation for identifying all possible constraints under which the objectives should be attained. We tend to determine data mining goals and then eventually produce a plan that is capable of fitting our requirements. Now, after that, what we need to do is we need to perform data exploration. Data exploration is the second step of uh, data analytics process where we try to understand the data because it is very much important for us to understand and correctly interpret the data that is to be required, that is to be used by the analytical process in order to de uh, deliver certain desired result. So that is what data exploration is all about. Data exploration basically refers to the entire task of collecting rightful data that is relevant to the to the business process and preparing it. Right? Okay. So. The second step consists of data understanding. So here, what we need to do is we need to gather the initial data, describe and explore the data, and verify the quality in order to ensure that the data contains what is required. So it's very much essential for us to ensure that whatever is required by the, by the business objectives are present in the data. So here, what we tend to do is we tend to collect data from various sources. We tend to collect data from the various sources, right? And the the uh, the, uh, the relevance of the data uh, to the uh, to the very uh, um, to the various uh, data objectives are also described so this is very much important because uh, data that uh, is collected may or may not be required by the business objective. So it's very much important for us to show the relevance of the collected data in connection to the business objective. So data collected from various sources is described in terms of its application. So this is very much essential because we need to know what is the relevance of the data in context to the business objectives. So this is called as data exploration. Now there is a definitely there is a need for verifying the quality of the data collected because until unless we do not ensure quality of data, we may not be capable of ensuring quality of result. Now the next phase that we have is called as data preparation. So next comes data preparation. So here what we need to do is we need to select data as per the need, clean it eradicate all possible problems that are associated with data, uh, construct it in order to get useful information and then integrate it all. So this is, this is what is done in case of um, uh, data preparation. So here what we tend to do is we tend to select the data that is required by the business objectives, then we need to clean it, we need to Clean it basically means we need to eradicate all possible problems that may be associated with the data and then construct it into a specific format that is required by the by the business objective or for, for the attainment of business objective. So here what we need to do is we need to format the data and um, format the data as per the requirement of the analysis process. So this is very much important. So here the data is selected, clean and integrated in the format finalized for analysis. Okay, so this is very much important. So during data preparation phase, as we have been discussing in the past as well, so what we tend to do is we tend to clean the data and prepare the data as per the format required by the analysis process. Then after that, the next phase that we have is it's called as data modeling. So once the data is gathered, we need to do data modeling. Now, why do we need to create models is a very important question because model is nothing but a representation of or a simplified representation of reality. So whenever you want to assess the ability of the system, what we tend to do is we tend to build the model of the system and then we tend to assess the, the ability of the model to uh, to 
to behave as expected compared to that of the system, right? Okay? So if the model works, then what we'll do is we'll pers pursue that particular model and refine into a particular system or use the knowledge of that particular model and create a new system. So that is the way how actually uh, 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 more the, the, uh, the reason, what, what, what is the reason for creating a model? So it's very important for us to uh, build up models because uh, models are capable of not only um, representing the, the, the entire system in a simplified manner, but it's also capable of representing the system as is and to be. So what is system ex as of now, what, it ex what it's expected to be after development. So this is very much important. So. So once the data is collected, we need to do data modeling. So for this, we need to select modeling techniques. So this is very much important. And then we need to generate test designs, build model, and assess the model that's being built. So this, this is very much important because we need to, be, we need to before, uh, uh, before implementation of the actual system, we need to ensure that the model is capable of replicating the behavior of the system because if the model works then system will definitely work so a model is nothing but a mimic of a system that's capable of behaving like a system but it's a very cost effective representation so uh, data model as the as a model as name says is nothing but a relationship between various objects of interest that may be there right uh, and uh, the, the relationships that are there existing between various objects are capable of realizing behavior. So that is what is tested. So whenever we say that we are testing a, a business model, so basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to see whether the related objects are actually capable of realizing business. So once data modeling is over, then what we need to do is we need to evaluate. So next comes data evaluation, where we evaluate the results generated in the last phase. I review the scope of error and determine next step that is to be performed. So here, in the, in the previous phase, what we've done is we have created data models and we have determined the ability of the data models to withstand uh, or, to, or to, to supplement the various requirements that are there. So if there exist certain errors, so what we need to do is we need to uh, review the, uh, the, the scope of errors and bring about corrective measures that are capable of uh, overcoming, that are capable of enabling the model to overcome the errors, right, again, okay? and then decide upon what is the next step that should be performed. So once a, a model is completely verified and validated, then what we need to do is we need to refine that particular model into a, a workable, uh, workable system which can be deployed in order to provide solution for the business process or in order to provide uh, a mechanism for attaining the business objective. So this is very much important. So here, results of test cases are evaluated and reviewed for scope of error. So, so this is very much important. So here, what we tend to do is we tend to test the model's ability to determine or to deliver the desired outcome. And if it does, it is refined into a system. And if it does not, then what are the possible avenues where improvement can be brought about in order to overcome the, the in order to overcome the deficiencies, so that it can be later on deployed. Uh, for attainment of business objectives. Now the next phase, that's the final phase, that's called as deployment. So final step in analytical process is deployment. So here, what we need to do is we need to plan the deployment, monitor and maintain the, the various business processes or the system that is, that is deployed in the environment and uh, capable of delivering certain valuable result. Right. So this is this is this is what is done in case of deployment phase. So you, so you deploy the system that has been developed into the environment and then enable the system to deliver the expected objective or deliver the expected result. So these are the various phases that you have in data analytics. So you have business understanding, you have data exploration, you have data preparation, you have data modeling, you have data evaluation and eventually you have deployment. So business understanding tries to determine the goal, data exploration tries to identify the data, data preparation, tries to prepare the data as per the requirement of the, the analysis process, data modeling, tends to build up data model, where models are nothing but 
uh, a representation of concepts and the relationship between them or representation of objects and relationship between them along with the constraints that are governing the integrity of the model so then once the model has been built then what you need to do is you need to evaluate the ability of the model to address to the concerns of the business objective so if it is capable of addressing to the concerns of the business objective it will be deployed if it does not then the scope for improvement is looked upon the system is refined and eventually deployed in the client's environment so in today's class what we have learned about is we have learned about uh, what are different types of data analytics so we have learned that there are basically four types of data analytics which are descriptive analytics diagnostic analytics or predictive analytics and uh, prescriptive analytics then we have uh, discussed about uh, the various phases that are involved in data analysis. We have identified there are six phases in data analysis. These are identify the question, collect, obtain the data, understand the data, prepare the data, analyze the data, and uh, present the, uh, the result. So we have discussed each and every uh, step in greater detail. And then we have looked upon uh, data analytics process where we have identified uh, six identifiable phases starting from business understanding to deployment, wherein during business understanding you try to identify the business objectives. During data exploration, you tend to identify the data. During data preparation, you tend to prepare the data as per the requirement of the analysis process. And in data modeling phase, you tend to create models where models are representation of concepts and the relationship between them along with the constraints that are governing the integrity of the model and in the data evaluation phase the models are evaluated for its ability to do to meet up to the expectation of the business objectives so once a model is capable of satisfying all the business objectives the models are deployed in the environment in order to provide solution to the business objectives or else if it doesn't if it's if it's not capable of um, providing a solution to the business objectives, then the model is con constantly refined and eventually deployed in the client's environment. So these are the, these are the contents for this particular class. So thank you very much. Have a very good day.